Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Steve, and I'm back with another video. It's been a minute since I've made one, but today I'm going to be showing you how to do this here. This is pulled pork made on the Pit Boss Kamado, so stay tuned. So I've got an eight pound picnic roast or pork shoulder, uh, whichever you want to call it, uh, right here. I had to do a bit of trimming uh, because it had quite a thick layer of fat on it. Uh, but now that we've got that down, we're gonna go ahead and get this set up to be smoked. So this is our picnic roast or uh, pork shoulder right here. Um, as you can see, there's still a light layer of a fat on here. I didn't cut all of it off, but I definitely want to get that thick, nasty stuff that would not render down off. So I'm just going to hit this with some olive oil as a binder. You can use whatever you want. Some folks use mustard, some use olive oil. Uh, I've seen some where people use none. So I mean, whatever is best for you. There is no right or wrong way for doing this. All right, so what I'm going to be using for a rub today is just my salt, pepper, garlic, and paprika mix. Um, I did a video several months ago about how to make SPG, and I just added some paprika to this because uh, paprika gives a really nice uh, color. And then I'm also going to use some Bad Byron's butt rub uh, as a rub. So let's get this seasoned up. One thing I have noticed or learned about doing this is not to be afraid to get this thing coated because you do want to taste uh, the rub in there. One of the things that I have been doing is not going uh, with enough rub for fear of over seasoning it. And I found that a lot of times the cube comes out good, but it could use a little bit more, <laughs> more rub. So that's one thing that will get squared away. And you want to make sure you get or cover as much area as you can. So now that we've got this covered, I want to go ahead and hit it with the Bad Byron's butt rub. And I know some of this is going to come off when I flip it over. Um, and that's okay. We can put a little bit more on right before it goes on the grill. And I'm just about out of my Bad Byron's butt rub. That means another trip to get some either... Go to order some off of Amazon or of all places, local Lowe's. Look at how that looks. All right, so what I'm gonna do is flip this over and repeat the process and I'll show you what it looks like once I'm all done. All right, this is our picnic shoulder uh, sitting here. I'm gonna leave it set up for a little bit, let uh, some of this rub start to soak in, let it sweat a little bit, and then I'm gonna put it back in the fridge until it's time to go on the smoker. So the next time I see you guys, we'll be heading out to the smoker. So stay tuned. Okay, so you can see that she's sitting right at about 250 degrees. I'm intending to smoke at 225, but I always, um, set it to go just a little bit higher simply because we're going to be putting cold meat on there cold meat is going to draw some of that heat and drop the temperature down a little bit so we've got a setting just where we want it i'm going to leave it right here for a couple minutes just to let it stabilize because it just hit 250. Um, and if you look at the vents you can see my top vent i'm not sure how well this is coming in in shade here but the top fan is sitting right at or just below the one and right here you can't really make them out too well but the numbers there's numbers here you can see that three and two and then the bottom fan is sitting just at 
uh, one. So this is perfect for cooling, 225, 250. So like I said, I'm gonna let this uh, stabilize here for a little bit, make sure it's, uh, there's no fluctuations or anything, and then I'm gonna bring the uh, shoulder out here and we'll throw it on the grill. All right, so while I'm back here and I'm waiting on this to, just to be sure that it's stabilized, I thought I'd take this time to answer a quick question. Uh, one I've seen a lot on a couple of the Kamado Facebook pages, as well as questions that I've been asked, and that's how to stabilize the temperature on a Kamado. Um, initially when I got this I felt it was a little difficult to do but you just have to practice um, a little bit and what I've learned what works for me and I understand I'm not a professional I don't claim to be I don't claim to have all of the answers but what works for me is I open this lid up and the bottom vent I open it all the way put my coals in light them and let them sit until they're starting to get ashed over at that point what I do is I close the lid and I'll, but I'll leave this top vent completely open as well as the bottom vent. Leave them open and of course your temperature will start to rise. When it starts to get close to your target temperature, I say somewhere about 100 to 75 degrees within your target temperature, you want to start slowly backing those vents down. So for me, my vents go all the way up to, what is it, three on here. So I'll have this set at three, bottom set at three, um, which is wide open. 75 to within 100 degrees of my target temp, I slowly start backing it down from three to two. And you wanna make sure whatever you have this top vent set on, you have the bottom as well. Now I can't speak for all Kamados, you know, I don't know if that specifically works with the Kamado Joes or with the big green eggs, but I know with the pit bulls, uh, that works like a charm for me. Um, just like if I have this set at three, I'll have the bottom vent set at three. When I start backing them off, finally to where I get to where my target temp is now at 250, this is set, uh, like I showed you guys, it's not even at one here, and then the same on the bottom. And you'll, you'll find that that holds your temperature rock steady. Now, a lot of people feel like, or a lot of people uh, say that it takes forever for that to, the charcoal and stuff to get hot and for it to come up to temperature. I'm not having that problem at all. Ever since I, I <laughs> learned this, I can get this thing up to temp in about 15, 20 minutes. Not a, a difficult task at all. So I hope that aspect uh, helps somebody out. Uh, right now it's sitting at 250. So I'm gonna go in and get this picnic shoulder and bring it out and we're gonna set this on the grill. So stand by. All right, now that our, temp, our uh, grill is up to temp and we're certain that it's holding, we can go ahead and throw this uh, shoulder on here. And we are aiming for an internal temperature of about 200 degrees, 200, 200 to 203 degrees. Keep an eye on it. And we're gonna close it and let it go. And we'll be back to check on it. Probably in about two hours. All right, so it has been an even two hours. Uh, my timer just went off. And right now, of course the temp's going up a little bit. It's about 280, 285. Um, we're showing the brisket, I mean, uh, shoulder temperature of 114. So we're going to go ahead and spritz this. Also, if you can't hear, we're getting a little bit of rain today. It's the way it's been here the last couple days. Uh, but anyway, we're going to go ahead and lift this up and spritz it now. Just doing that for a little moisture here. Doesn't seem to be getting much of a bark on it. Check it again in about an hour and a half or so. 
Hey guys, I'm back. Um, it's been about an hour and a half. I wasn't going to record this um, simply because I just thought it was going to be another uh, regular spritz and be done. Uh, the last time I looked on here, about an hour and a half ago, I commented that I noticed that there hadn't been much of a bark forming and I just took a peek and it's, it's forming pretty good now. So let's take a quick look. It looks great, and I don't have uh, no water pan or anything. It has shrunk up quite a bit, but it's just me and my family going to be eating it, so I think we're going to be alright. So I'm going to set another hour, hour and a half timer. Um, right now it's holding it, it's not holding, but it's about... 160 so it may be hitting a stall soon I don't know but we'll see all right so I'll see you guys shortly all right so here we are five hours in rain has gone away and we've got sunshine uh, this shoulder is at 185 right now so we still got about 18 more degrees to go Let's take a quick peek at it. And that's what we got going right now. Going like it. Hit it with a little spritz here. Got a nice bark going. This looks great and it smells great. Alright, so I'll catch you guys next time I uh, see you. I'll be taking this off in, in the house. See you then. There's a lot of the rub um, all throughout. Really good. Uh, just really impressed with the smoke ring and with the smoking capabilities of that. Pit Boss, like I said at the start of the video, this is one of the one things that I had not done on there. Uh, the This, I have not done um, ribs and I have not done uh, pork belly or brisket yet. So those are, I still have a few things to look forward to. And what I'm going to do just to liven this up just a little bit is I'm going to hit it with a little bit more uh, seasoning because I think that would really help. Um, it's already good but I just want to add just a little bit more to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish pulling this. Um, plate up a sandwich and I'll let you guys know uh, what the final product tastes like so <laughs> stick around alright guys so here is the final product got a couple of pulled pork sandwiches and some baked beans I made the pulled pork sandwiches two ways I have one with uh, just coleslaw and one with barbecue sauce. Uh, you can make it where you mix the uh, sauce in and put coleslaw on top. You can do it whatever way works best for you. But I just wanted to try uh, both of these here and see how they came out. So take a bite of the one that's just the uh, barbecue sauce. And the sauce that I use on this mm, is sweet baby rays, sweet and spicy, really, really good. It goes well with the rub that we used, which was, of course, the salt, pepper, garlic, and paprika, and then the uh, Bad Byron's butt rub. Um, a very, very nice smoky flavor. And we smoked this up with pecan wood, so that really comes through as well. And for the last one, I'm going to take a bite of the one with the coleslaw on it. 
and they both are very good. The coleslaw, uh, I don't know, something about it just really brings out the smoky flavor in the uh, sandwich. You guys have got to give this a try when you get a chance. Let me know uh, what you think of this video down in the comment section below. Please do hit that like button and remember to share it with others. And if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.